Hey guys, today I am going to read you an article on Business Insider. So the article, if you want to Google it, you want to read it yourself, uh, go ahead. You want to have your own opinions, let me know in the comments, but it is very negative for Magic the Gathering. And there's a recent article, April 20th. Magic the Gathering remain, remains a key risk for Hasbro stock as collectors grow cautious on investing on new card sets. Let's repeat that title again and think of how absurd this is, right? Magic the Gathering remains a high risk or a key risk for Hasbro stock as collectors grow cautious on investing in new card sets. New card sets are 100% not investable. What do I mean by new card sets? I mean, uh, if it has a collector's edition, it's relatively new. Uh, I'll just name the new card sets that are not investable in my opinion. Crimson Vow, Midnight Hunt, New Campena, Neon Dynasty, and I'm talking about everything. They go on sale on Amazon all the time. I, I bought uh, free boxes of Neon Dynasty uh, just the other two days ago. Uh, new Campena collector's editions are around $100 on sale. And people go, oh, I, I'm on the website right now. I don't see it. No, you idiots. Like, I don't know why I have to compete. Because I always get so many comments where they, it's called a sale. It's like a holiday. You wait for the holiday. You see what goes on their store and you buy it. It's a sale. It's marketing 101. You can't put your product on sale all the time. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a sale and there would be no urgency to buy the product. So anyway, let's go ahead and read some of this. Hasbro stock. Okay, they just can kind of repeat this. The bank said stores and collectors have grown more cautious about investing in new product sets over the game. We still see magic underperformance as a key risk, especially in 2H23 as Hasbro laps a crowded release schedule, uh, Bank of America said. So this is Bank of America hating on Hasbro again. Hasbro stock faces challenges with its Magic the Gathering franchise as underperformance and growth remains a real possibility, according to a Thursday note from Bank of America. The bank highlighted ongoing headwinds wins for the popular card game af after Hasbro flooded the market with a wave of new card sets and theme releases last year, arguably diluting the value of the card game, known for fetching hundreds of thousands of dollars for ultra rare cards and testing the loyalty of fans. There is a lot of wallet fatigue, Brooklyn-based Action City Comics owner Eric. Oh, thank God, like, remember what I was talking about? Like, hey, shouldn't these people in Hasbro be talking to uh, people who sell magic, you know, comic book store owners, magic stores, players why the f are they putting a twitter post on why is aaron forset or whatever their names getting why is their only research they do like a twitter hey guys uh what do you guys think about magic oh brian kibler dare to dream oh magic's going great you guys pay me a million dollars to dare to dream I i'm doing great man every this game is crushing it so then you read the twitter responses you compare it to reality which is magic is in the pooper right now it's literally a trash can on fire, like a Rudy meme. But it ain't no 2020. <laughs> this is uh, this is much worse. Um, and it's not going to be fixed because the Amazon problem is never going to go away. Like, how are you going to invest in a, any product that Amazon has infinite amounts of? Because they have a very special relationship, you know, uh, with. I, and it's not, and I can I can make it very simple for you because it's the same relationship that Hasbro has with Walmart. All right, you don't like me? F you, I'm gonna drop all your toys. I'm gonna drop all your Power Rangers, your Transformers, your board games are gone. I'm gonna remove them all. How you like me now? So like the leverage, Hasbro has zero leverage when it comes to you know Magic the Gathering because they need to give Magic the Gathering at you know, and that's why. During the pandemic, all you saw was like, Gar, I'm positive Magic isn't like proud of that. Wrestling cards, UFC, God forbid there was any Pokemon cards at the time. People were stabbing each other in the parking lot for Pokemon cards. And then Magic card is <laughs> just fully stocked they got everything. And you look at you, you look at the thing, like I, I guarantee you, 
that was not what they were going for at the time because you have to like it's it's marketing 101 there has to be like some type of limitation it's like a drop it's like a merch drop there's an urgency to do something so oh wow you know this is a a hoodie from Supreme and it's dropping, it's only a hundred of them. It's dropping, you know, at like 5 a.m. in the morning, get in line early. That's hype. Magic has no hype. It's un impossible because how are you gonna hype it? It's just, oh, buy the box today. Cause five years from now, we'll, it'll be on sale on Amazon for 72 bucks. Buy today for a hundred. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? Like, you know, I benefit a lot. I, I no longer, my distribution canceled. No more Magic the Gathering cards for me, for my distributor. We only do Pokemon. Scarlet and Violet, it's wayable. I, I, I watched some YouTube videos. I thought they were lying. I was like, oh, clearly they're just doing it for views. Then I tested it. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> it's wayable. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, that's kind of crazy. A anyway, back to my um, original thing. Let's read the article. And it's what it's that wallet fatigue that could hurt the sales growth of Magic the Gathering for Hasbro going forward, according to Bank of America analysis. Jason Has is he the same dude? Has it been like one dude? Somebody check that. Is it Jason Has from the very beginning? Like, like, has it been like one dude reporting, or has it been multiple dudes? While engagement in Magic remains solid, stores and collectors have been more cautious to invest in new products. Has said. We continue to see modest declines in price for reserve list cards, where prices for more recent releases have held up okay. Yep. I, I would say modest declines is like epic declines. Hash expects Hasbro Wizards subsidiary that publishes Magic Cards to report first growth revenue growth of just 2%, half of the 4% growth rate expected by the consensus. We still see Magic under performance as key risk, especially in the second half so he's not just saying, oh, wow, we underperformed by 50%. He's saying that the second half of 2023 will be even worse as Hasbro laps a crowded release schedule. Has said, adding that Hasbro's guidance looks too optimistic. Positivism, guys. That's what it is. Also, not helping matters for Hasbro investors is the disappointing ticket sales for Dungeons & Dragons which has only grossed 158 million worldwide in the first three weeks of release. The reported budget of the movie was 150 million, which implies 375 million to 400 million ticket sales are needed to break even after accounting for other expenses. And so it's not gonna break even. So three weeks in, everyone who wanted to see the movie already saw the movie and it's only halfway to break even, best case scenario. The movie has been outshined by the success of Mario. Yeah, that's true, Nintendo. Wow, imagine that. I wonder what else Nintendo owns. Oh, they own this dude called Pikachu. And we do not believe it has driven much increased engagement with the game, Haas said. He reiterated an underperform rating on Hasbro stock in a $42 price target, which represents potential downside of 19% for current level. This guy's been right the whole time. Alpha Investments is buying all this stock and telling you to buy some Hasbro stock. No, this guy's right. Every time you say they go down, it go down. You know, <laughs> I mean, 40, he's thinking, what is, what is it right now? What, what's Hasbro stock today? 40, okay, let's take a look at Hasbro stock, guys. Again, I'm not hating on it. I'm just telling you the truth. I know a lot of you don't know what that means because you guys don't understand. Okay. I don't have my glasses on. This is not going to work. Like somebody put in the Hasbro stock today. What is Hasbro? Okay. It, it's so low that it's not even searchable. All right. When you get articles like this and they're mainstream articles and a mainstream investor is looking at this who doesn't play magic, they're going to be like, wow, that, that sucks, man. That's dumb. And let me, let me make it very clear. New sets are not investable. I don't care if they're collector's edition, secret layers. I don't care if they're bundles or you know i mean there's like so many different skews for each thing i as a game store owner will tell you straight up it's not investable rudy in his recent video said it's not an investment if you want an investment he said put an s p 500 and this is the first time i agreed with him this stuff old new reserve list the, the problem is very simple i can i can solve this issue in a very simple so pokemon i can take pokemon pokemon's the example did you realize their booster pack went from $4 to $5 on Walmart and no one blinked an eye? Why is that? Why is that? Imagine Magic doing something like that, right? 
why can Scarlet and Violet sell for five dollars at every Target, every Walmart, every? Why can it do that? Why can they go to four to five and very minimal complaints? You're like, oh, they added extra foil. No, no, that's not why. The extra foil is a minuscule price. I don't. I was actually doing Scarlet and Violet pricing for uh, the cards that I wanted to sell, and uh, there are no foils. There's no foils or reverse foils over fifty cents. Mark on TCG play. They're just simple. So that yes, there's maybe a tiny bit, like a few cents of additional value, but there's not a dollar of additional value. The simple reason is the player base is there. Why did Mario do well? People like Mario. The movie was well done. They they thought it out, and Mario is a huge iconic character for Nintendo. Why is Pokemon doing well? Well, I mean, for all the reasons that a sports card investor, Jeff Wilson, thinks Disney Locana, the IP is fantastic. I always told you about this. The, it's the IP. If you ask a non nerd if you ask like your parents, do you know, can you name one Pokemon? They probably would say Pikachu. If you ask a five-year-old, can you name one Pokemon? They probably would say Pikachu. If you ask your parents, can you name one Magic the Gathering Planeswalker? No. If you ask a five-year-old, can you name one Magic the Gathering Planeswalker? No. So we have a big, big core problem right now. And the core problem is there's no IP. And they thought Dungeons & Dragons had good IP. Well, it turned out it has shitty IP because no one went to see the movie based on the name title. So back to... I think I have something stuck in my nose. Um, back to my initial assessment, why is Hasbro so bad? It has shitted on its IP. I'm an IP attorney. I passed my patent bar exam when I was 21 years old. I've been doing this shit for, uh, God, a long time. The IP sucks. It's really that simple. If your IP is as bad at Magic as Magic the Gathering's IP is, you have no hope for future. Unless you start changing things. No one knows any of these Magic characters outside Magic. It, it's almost like... It's almost like they're tanking the product. I don't know why they would ever want to do that, but it's almost like they are doing that. Anyway, we'll have a longer discussion. Hi, guys.